um, you know, you have the opportunity to influence us in uh, which endpoint domain we approach next. So if you have an idea for an application that operates outside of the browser endpoint or the, the browser domain, let us know. Uh, and we'll take that into consideration as we try to talk Phil into uh, which direction to go. We've got quite a, a development roadmap already, but um, you know we see the need for other uh, for endpoints and other domains. So basically, endpoints are what make KNS applications work. They are the thing on the client that ties the application to uh, to the user, and your options are plentiful. Okay, so uh, let's as you're thinking about your apps. Um, you know, I, you're welcome to contact me directly and we can talk about uh, your endpoint selection process. And I also want to emphasize that this is only our current thinking on endpoints. As, uh, as information cards evolve and as our platform evolves, this is going to change. Just like instrument approach procedures change every 28 days, this is going to evolve as well. Um, I've been with Kinetic since the time when we only had one endpoint and that was uh, explicit site tagging. Uh, and now we have several more and, and I'm sure we're going to have more to come. So with that, I'll open up to questions. Gentlemen. Uh, just repeat the question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is just a basic terminology question. Um, the term endpoint as you use it, can you define very specifically, is it the place where the rules fire or is it the place where the results of the rules are displayed? I just It's a new context for me to use the word endpoint here and it's, it will help me understand. Uh, I think of the endpoint as the, um, not the place where the rules fire, but it is the place that initiates the rule fire. Um, so for example, if I have an end, the endpoint for my web browser is a browser extension that initiates the rule firing and then in the browser's case, the browser already has an execution environment in it, so we're lucky. But if we were to create an endpoint for Outlook, for example, the endpoint would be an Outlook extension which would initiate the rule firing and then interpret the results and cause the change to happen in the client. Okay, so, so the extent the Outlook extension would have to take action, like move this message to a folder or whatever the action was. So, like I said, in the browser we got we picked the low-hanging fruit. We got a execution environment for free. We won't get that in every endpoint. So the endpoint is the place that actually interfaces with the client to make the action happen. The endpoint controller, which is a card selector, for example, is what's actually controlling various endpoints and giving them instructions and helping them to know what to what to do where. But, uh, does that help? Yeah. I can see how it'd be real confusing to, to think that context is only a browser thing. This we're only talking about browsers because that's easy. This could be for any app at any endpoint. So if I'm understanding this correctly, part of the reason you chose the terminology endpoint is because you wanted make it clear the user has a variety of endpoints on which they might want a context automation to be okay. Your that really helps a lot because when I think of endpoints, you know, I don't know about others in the room, I think about network endpoints, which I go to use some aspect of the network. And, I, and then now this is adding the whole thing, well, there's a set of my endpoints and that's what you're trying to yeah. populate here. Okay. And also those, it seems like what you're doing is they're, they're almost like little mini clients, right? You have a little mini client in the browser that's an extension here. So you've got a little rules client that is providing that context automation. That, that helps a lot. Repeat the question. <laughs> <laughs> you need to ask one first, Craig. Before I oh, yeah. oh, yeah. What other uh, questions about endpoints? Dual purpose here. What happens if you have multiple endpoints? How, how the rules are going to execute? Um, like for example, here I can have a browser extension as well as a proxy. Okay. So as Phil said, the uh, the point of the endpoint is to 
uh, initialize the rule set evaluation. So you, if you have multiple things initializing rule set evaluation, then you could have multiple rules firing. And as, as Sam said before, you have, you know, you could have rules collide. Right now, uh, the reality of the situation is if you have multiple endpoints installed in your browser, so let's say you have the information card, you have a single purpose extension, you're on my blog where rules are firing because they've been planted in the page, and you're also going through a proxy, right? You've potentially got four different And, and a bookmarklet. And, and, a, and a, yeah, well, <laughs> you have to click on that to make it happen, so we'll leave that one. But, but the reality of the situation right now, every one of those will plant tags, and they could collide. Now the truth of the matter is, we don't see that much, but we have an architecture worked out to where multiple endpoints won't collide. It hasn't been released yet. So the architecture's done, the implementation's not, but, but our intent is to make it multiple endpoints a non-issue. Can I speak to that for one second? That's one of the beauties of kinetics. So we've all seen the iPhone app world explode. People are making millions of dollars doing iPhone apps. One of the cool things about Kinetics is you can offer your app on an iPhone, on the web, through a bookmarklet, through browser extensions. There's, there's layers of functionality there that wasn't available before. And with layers of functionality comes layers of revenue that wasn't there before. And you can connect a lot of those endpoints together in a way that wasn't available before. Like. Thank you, Kristen. Other questions? All right. Very good. Turn back over to Kristen. Thanks, Dave.